Hey, how are you guys doing? I am teacher Tony Allen and I am here with another episode of Digging Deep. And I just wanna say thank you guys for joining us. I appreciate you coming in here and just allowing me to uh, participate with you in this process, right? Right now we're doing our series U-Turn. You are part of the process. And so I just wanna encourage each and every one of you guys to remember that what we're going on, what's going on in the valley and what's going on in your life is necessary for your advancement. God has a purpose and he has a plan for you. And I'm so looking forward to seeing what God is going to not only do with you, but do with all of us and everyone that's in the kingdom. I thank God that in the year 2022, it's going to be awesome. I'm looking for him to blow my mind with the new things that he's doing. And so with that being said, I just wanna open up with a brief word of prayer and then we get into our topic for today. All right, Father God, in the name of Jesus, we just come before your throne. We just honor you in this day, oh God. We honor you for what you have done and what you will do. We honor you as Lord of all, and we give you the space to be who you call, who you said you would be for us, oh God. Holy Spirit, we ask that you be the teacher of the church. Have your way. Show up and show out. Do what only you can do. And God, I pray that this word will be life changing. It will be heart, heart changing, oh God, and mind renewing to being fixed, firm, and planted in you, and also to serve you, oh God, with a greater intensity and passion. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right, so we've been talking about the process, and the process is, is of transition is God's training and development plan for the body of Christ, right? Now, a training and development plan consists of growing in skill sets that people have so that they are advanced along a path, right, towards an ultimate goal. Now, ideal success, meaning that you're going to meet this ultimate goal, it means that you produce at maximum capacity the highest level of productivity. What does that mean? That you are repeatedly, repeatedly functioning at the peak level of performance in that goal, right? So in order to get to the ultimate goal point, there are sub-goals that need to be met, right? And what is the ultimate goal and what are the sub-points? sub goals or sub points that believers should be meet, should be meeting well the ultimate goal is doing the will of god and that his kingdom on earth will come and that his will will be done on earth as it is in heaven right now our sub goals can be broken down in two groups the collective and the individuals the collective goal is for the body is for that of the body of believers or what we know as churches our collective goal as a body of believer is to work is for all believers working together effectively in the spheres of influences that God has given us to impact um, they've given us to impact so that we can achieve the ultimate goal break that down just a little bit further right that means that God has given us spheres of influences in communities and regions and nations that we can change um, and impact the lives of other people. We can show forth the goodness of God, that we can teach others that his precepts and his ways, right? But we can also be living examples of what God has said to be as far as uh, to live up to his standards, right? That's what we could be in as a collective body of believers. It's not just one person alone. That's, it, that's individual. And so we're going to talk about the individual goal in a second, but as a collective, as we come together as believers, as we're in churches, right? God has given us to communities. He's given us to areas where we can feed the homeless, where we can uh, reach out to our neighbors, so that we can show the love to everybody that, and that we meet, that God has saved us from the dead, right? It saved us, right? He's changed our lives. He's restored us. He's revived us, right? Some of us have been in sin, but God has revived us from that sin, right? And now we get to testify to his goodness and his mercy. That's an awesome thing to know that we can testify of what God has done, but we can do it together, right? It's not just one person, but it's together. So what's the individual goal? Well, the individual goal is unique to each and every person, and it should be that you use your gifts and talents that God has given you to supply as needed to the collective body of believers so that we together, we achieve the ultimate goal of God's will being done on earth as it is in heaven so that God's kingdom would be established. Now, once again, what does that mean? Individually, right, we have gifts and talents. And as we supply our gifts and talents, right, whether it's to sing, whether it's to help others, to serve, to sow, to cook, 
to be financial blessings, right, to be givers, to give wisdom, instruction, knowledge, to teach the word, right, to preach. Guess what? When we supply all those things, right, we're helping to build up the kingdom of God. And individually, we can supply it as in collective bodies, in churches. We can do it in denominations. We can do it in groups. We can do it in, in bodies of belief. But ultimately, in the church at large, right, we don't worry about the denominations factor per se, right? We are, we're looking at the church at large, the whole body of Christ. We get to supply right? And individually, we make an impact as a united body of Christ that we can change this world for the glory of God. Amen. Notice, I want you to notice how your individual goal is built upon the collective goal, and the collective goal is used to meet the ultimate goal. It should be clear that when you see the connection of the goals, that as individuals, you see that you're a part of the process, and that your process, your process is important. Yes, you are important. Your individual process of training and development is necessary part of the process of Valley Kingdom Ministries International, um, of the body of, of Christ as a whole, but it's all about helping the body move to the level next. Yeah, you're part of the process. Now, in order for any training or development plan to work, there must be commitment to the process. Commitment to the process. What does that word commitment mean? Well, commitment is broken down in a root and in a suffix, right? It starts with to commit. Commit means to carry out or perpetrate a, or, or bind, right? A pl or pledge, excuse me, to carry out or perpetrate, to bind or to pledge to a certain course of policy. Right? It means that you are now binding yourself to a certain, certain course or, or policy effort. Now, the suffix meant is the backside, right? It says the action or process of doing something. So when we put it together, uh, it means that commitment is the action or process of carrying out a pledge or binding to a certain course or policy. In other words, commitment is an action on our part, in response to God, will we do what we say, right? We're going to do exactly what we said do. Some of the synonyms of commitment are promise, responsibility, charge, committal, pledge, liability, duty, undertaking, vow, or your word. So what are some of the building blocks of commitment? Let's start with love. John 14 and 50 says, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. Understand this, when you are totally committed to God, you'll keep his commandments. You don't waver from them. So if you love him, you'll keep his commandments. So love is the first building point. Building point. So the next one will be dedication. Colossians 3.17 says, And whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. You dedicate everything that you do to God. You give him the glory in all that you do. Right? That's commitment. The next is availability, right? Isaiah 6 and 8 says that, And I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Then, he, then I said, Here am I, send me. Are you available to God? Are you open to do whatever God told you to do? Are you willing to go wherever God says go? Even if it's to the darkest places, even if it's the places that you really don't want to go, are you really committed to that? That's a great question. Because if you're really committed, if you're really committed, you would be available to do whatever God said to do. Right? And the next one is flexibility. You say, well, flexibility and availability, aren't those the same? Uh, not so much. See, because just because I'm available to go, I may not be flexible. I may not do it because I don't want to do it, right? But I want you to remember the mindset here. Philippians 4 and 13 says that I can do all things through him who strengthens me. If you're flexible, not only do you have the ability to do it, but you are willing to do it even when you don't want to do it, right? Because you can do all things. You can do all things through Christ that strengthens you. So your commitment level 
has to be rooted in love, there has to be dedication to it, there has to be availability to it, and you have to be flexible in the process, right? We must understand that our love of God is the basis of commitment to serving him. The relationship that we have with God starts with accepting the fact that he first loved us. Second, he sent his son to die for us so that we can have eternal life through Christ. Where commitment comes, is, comes into being is when we determine to make sure that we maintain the love that we have for God, that we are dedicated to keeping the connection with God unbroken. Now, Joshua 24 and 15 tells us, choose, your, choose for yourself this day whom you will serve. This verse establishes that our commitment with God starts with a choice to serve him or not. It is our responsibility to maintain the relationship with God. We have that responsibility. Remember, we're in covenant relationship. It's not a one-way street. It's a two-way street. Individually, corporately, we have a relationship with God, right? And so this part of commitment can be understood that there's four elements, right? There's four elements or four conditions um, of commitment. We see that we, we already talked about the four building blocks, but I want to talk about the four conditions or the four elements that go into commitment. We're going to look at Psalms uh, 37, 5, and 6. Now, the passage of Scripture says, Commit your way to the Lord, trust in him, and he will act. He will bring forth your righteousness as the light and your justice as the noonday. Now, in this passage, we see that there are four uh, conditions or terms and conditions, right? It starts with our purpose, the purpose, right? Trust that the, that the Lord's will will be done. It says, commit your way to the Lord. When you commit your way to God, you give your will over for that of the Lord's. God's will becomes primary. So the purpose of your commitment is that God's will becomes primary. Now, what's the sacrifice, right? There's an element of sacrifice in this. It says the sacrifice is the giving of your will, right? It says commit your way to the Lord. You give up the glory and fame that you can get apart from God, right? And that's the honor and the riches that you would get outside of the world on your own. But when you give that up, Right. The sacrifice, the reward of the sacrifice is the righteousness and testimony that God has for you. Luke 9 and 23 says that if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. That's the words of Christ. So if you're truly committed to this relationship with Christ. You're going to deny yourself, give up your will. Take up your cross and follow him. And follow him to say what? Just as he said on the cross, right? Just as he said, as he said, even before the cross, not my will, but thy will be done. He denied himself, so we have to also deny ourselves and take up our cross. Hmm. That's part of sacrifice. Then we look at the promise. That's the third element, the promise. The promise is God will back up his word and support you. God will elevate you. He will promote your righteousness. He will testify to your faithfulness, as was in the case of Abel in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 4. Right? And what's the payoff? God will justify you, and he will fulfill his promises to you. There's a payoff in this, right? It says that in verse 6, it says, in Psalms 37 and 6, it says, He will bring forth your righteousness as the light and your justice as the noonday. Right? God will bring it forth when you honor him, when you commit your ways to him. Right? Now, what I love about this relationship factor with God, this covenant relationship, is that we have a part to play. It's not just... Uh, a one-way street where God is just gimme, 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 gimme. He's given us everything, right? But we have a part. And I love this because it is a real relationship. God is looking for a real relationship. And this process is developing that real relationship that we have, not only with God, right, when we look at the individual side, but collectively as a body. You have a chance to be a part of a collective in a new way.
When God does a new thing, you do a new thing. And you put more into it, right? You increase your love, you increase your giving, you increase your unity, you increase your faithfulness, you increase your servitude, you supply, you train others, you teach others. Yeah, we've covered all of those aspects over these last few weeks. But what we want to really talk about is that commitment and that dedication factor. And I want to give a prime example of a body of believers, right? Standing forward in commitment. How do you, as part of, the, of uh, as part of an individual, or as an individual, have a part to play in the body of believers. Let's look at Nehemiah chapter 10. Now we see the Israelites have returned uh, to Jerusalem. They helped rebuild the wall. Um, in chapter 8, they uh, heard the law. They, read the, they heard the reading of the law by the prophet uh, Ezra, and they repented, right? They, and they repented before God. In chapter 10, what we see here now is that they have made vows and commitments to fulfilling the law, right, and, and upholding the law. They have retained a commitment to the covenant. So let's look at verse 28, right? Verse 28 says, the rest of the people, see previously the noble and the leaders had already signed a written decree, but everybody who was a part of this process now stood forward. Everybody couldn't sign that document. That'd be a long time. It would take a lot of people to sign that document, multiple pages, like probably miles. But they could all stand for it and give a verbal vow before God. And so in verse 28, this is what they did. It said, the rest of the people, the priests, the Levites, the gatekeepers, the singers, the temple servants, and all who had separated themselves from the people of the lands to the law of God, their wives, their sons, their daughters, all who had knowledge and understanding, joining with the brothers, with their brothers, their nobles, and entered into a, a curse and an oath to walk in God's law that was given to Moses by the servant of God and to observe do, to, to serve and do all the commandments of the Lord, our Lord and his rules and statute, right? They committed to observe and to do his, the Lord's rules and statute. Now they said in verse 30, and 30 that they wouldn't give themselves over to marriage, they would keep them pure. They wouldn't give their daughters to marry nor would their sons take wives of, um, people outside the land, uh, uh, outside the covenant, right? Because there were other people that were in the land that weren't of the covenant. And so they wouldn't intermingle and intermarry. In verse 31, they also said that they would keep their business affairs separated um, and since on the day of the Sabbath, right? They would keep the Sabbath and keep it holy, which was one of the laws. And so they wouldn't do that. And then they would honor the law of rest in the seventh year with the Samita year, um, and they would excuse all the debts of those that were a part of the covenant. So there you have, in, thir in verse 32 now, you have the people of God saying that they would honor with their finances, right? And they said that they would give a shekel, they would, they would give a yearly, a third part of a shekel for the service of the house of God for the showbread, the regular grain offering, the regular burnt offerings, the Sabbath, the new moons, the appointed feasts, the holy things, and the sin offerings to make atonement for Israel and for all the work of the house of God. They put the house of God first, right? They dedicated and was committed to putting the house of God first. And verse 34 says that we, the priests, the Levites, and the people have likewise cast lots for the wood offering to bring it into the house of our God, according to our father's houses at times appointed year by year to burn on the altar of the Lord of God, as it is written in the law. See, they made sure that the altar, that the fire on the altar wouldn't burn out, right? They made sure that the house of God was, was fully, fully functional as what God wanted them to to be. They also made a commitment to bring first the first fruit. They also made a commitment that the uh, Levites and the priests would receive the tithes, right? And then the Levites in verse 38 says, and the Levites shall bring up the tithe of the tithe to the house of God to the chambers of the storehouse, right? This was a full dedicated commitment. Every part of the whole entire body committed their ways to God. See, and not only did they commit to God, they committed the household to God. 
They committed the servitude of the assembly to God. And when I say the household, I mean the whole household of believers in that assembly to God, not just the individual households, but we're talking about the whole collective group, right? Their commitment to keeping a covenant with God was rooted in making sure to honor God first. Every action in Nehemiah 10 was a commitment to sacrifice, giving of their selves, and to assure that God is primary and that the requirements of God um, in the Mosaic covenant was carried out. See, they recognized that God was going to keep his end of the covenant, so they had to make sure that they uphold their end of the covenant. Likewise, we as believers, we have to make sure that we uphold our end of covenants with God. If God has given a mission to this house, we, don't, we may not call it a covenant, but it's a mission, right? If God has told us to serve a certain body or serve in a certain community, we have to do that. We have to be faithful to that, right? And we have to stay submitted to him. That means that we can do whatever we need to do that is lawful underneath the laws of God as long as we stay in order underneath God and we stay submitted to the authority that's above us. What does that mean? We have to make sure that what we're doing is in God's will. We have to make sure that we're working to build up his kingdom, not tear it down. We have to make sure that we're working united as a body of believers together and individually where we need to supply, we have to supply. That's part of, that's part of this process, right? So what does commitment look like? Now, commitment is long lasting. Revelations 14 and 12, it says, um, here's the call for the endurance of the saved, those who keep the commandments of God and their faith in Jesus. Commitment withstands adversity. We look at that in James 1, 2 through 4. Count it all joy, my brother, when you meet, are met with trials of various kinds, for you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness, and let steadfastness have its full effect, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. Commitment is built upon trust. Psalms 37 and 5, commit your way to the Lord, trust in him, and he will act. Commitment fortifies you. Proverbs 16 and 3, your work, your work to the Lord and your plans will be established. It says, commit your work to the Lord and your plans will be established. Commitment is serious. Numbers 30 and two. If a man vows a vow to the Lord or swears an oath to bind himself by a pledge, he shall not break his word. He shall do according to all that produces, or excuse me, proceeds out of his mouth. James 5 and 12. But above all, my brother, do not swear either by heaven or by earth or by any other oath, but let your yes be your yes and your no be your no, so that you may not fall under condemnation. Guess what? When you are committed, you have to be dedicated. Yes is yes and no be no, right? Commitment is an action of your heart. First Kings 8, 6 and 61 says, let your heart therefore be wholly true to the Lord your, our God, walking in his statutes and keeping his commandments as at this day. Holy true. It's an act of your heart, right? Commitment is dedication and action. Colossians 3, 30, 3 and 23 says, whatever you do, work heartily as for the Lord and not for men. And I want to give you this, Galatians 6 and 9, it shows us that commitment to God is rooted in purposeful action. And let us not get weary in, of doing good, for in due season we will reap if we do not give up. Right. So guess what? Commitment is the basis of service. It's the basis of everything that we do. We do it because of the glory to God. Right, we're rooted in serving God. We're staying focused in what God has for us to do. But more importantly, we understand that there's the byproducts of it, right? Our reward, <laughs> our reward is, 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 there's a true reward that's coming, right? And the reward, we see it in uh, first, uh, first Corinthians 15, uh, 58, is that our labor, when our labor is not in vain, 
it shows us in Hebrews uh, 6 to 10, for God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love, which ye have showed towards his name, in that ye have ministered to the saints and do minister. Now, in this life and in the next, God will make sure, according to our works, that we get a reward. That's Matthew 16, 27, and Revelation 22 and 12. Right. We have to be fully committed, 100%. The rewards that we get, whether in this world or in our life, right? We've already talked about it. He'll reward us openly. He'll justify us. He'll give us justice. His right, our, his, our righteousness will be shown forth in the light of the day, right? And guess what? It's about giving him glory, honor, and praise. So I believe that this message, if it has not convicted you to stay committed, if it, if it has not convinced you to stay committed, <laughs> I want you to be sure that whatever you do, it goes to the glory of God. And God will receive you. God will honor it. And God will, uh, God will use your commitment to help build up the kingdom. Not just your individual self, not just your local church, but the kingdom so that his will can be done, right? That's primary. So when you're committed to making sure that his will be done, Everything else, all everything else, right? When we seek first the kingdom, everything else will be added to you. It's not done in vain. It's done purposeful. But more importantly, it's done for God's glory. So with that being said, I hope you're committed to the process. I hope you understand that God's looking for your commitment in this training and development, not only to get you to your level next, not only to get the valley to the level next, so that God's kingdom can come and that his will will be done on earth as it already is in heaven. And with that, I'm Teacher Tony Allen, and I'm done. Have a great night. Wow, that was an amazing teaching, and I know that you were truly blessed by it. And with that teaching, it gave us principles of the kingdom. But one key principle of the kingdom is salvation and being in relationship with Christ. And so if you're new to the body, you may not be sure what that means. All that is, is coming into relationship and accepting Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And it can be just as simple as saying, Lord, forgive me, for I am a sinner. I'm not perfect. I've done things that I'm not proud of but I believe in you and I know that you save. And so you can save me. So if you in your heart feel like you need a savior, that you need relationship with something bigger, something greater, then I wanna invite you to build relationship with Christ on today. So just repeat after me. Father God, I, I know I don't know everything. I know I haven't always done right, but I know that you are the God that makes my path straight. Come into my heart, forgive me of my sins, and I believe in you, that you died and you rose on the third day just for me, and just for me, I want to give my life over to you. So, Father, come into my heart, because I believe you to be my Savior. If you prayed that, welcome to the family, welcome to the fold, welcome to the body of Christ. We are so excited for you, and we are um, wanting to build connection, relationship, and community with you. So go ahead, fill out that connection card, uh, drop it in the chat that you gave your life to Christ because we want to connect with you and we want to help you through this journey as you um, learn more about Jesus, as you learn more about relationship. And even if you were a backslider and you may have stepped away, welcome back. We are excited because God is married to the backslider. We won't be perfect. We will make mistakes, but God can redeem us. And we are just so excited for the step that you have taken on tonight to come back into the fold of, of the body of Christ and to come into relationship. So once again, fill out that connection card because we wanna connect with you. And we thank you, all of you who are watching right now, who have been giving to us, who have been generous partners. We appreciate you because we wouldn't be able to do the work, the kingdom work that we do, not only here in the States, but internationally without you. So every donation that you make, it helps us to edify and build the kingdom for our Lord and Savior. So 
If you would like to give on tonight, if you would like to donate, if you would like to sow into good, solid ground, you can do that at this time. You see the information across the screen. And until next time, we pray that you have a blessed week and keep digging deeper because we're all a part of the process and sometimes we have to make a U-turn. Well, be blessed. Yeah.